Hello viewers. E is an Euler's number, most of us would have used it in mathematics, physics and at several other places. We know its value, but several people do not know why E is such an important number and how it is obtained. This video will present the theoretical explanations of E. E is a magic number. In order to understand, we take an example of growth. Suppose, we invest some money, which doubles at the completion of a unit time period, say, one year, as shown. On the timeline, three years, are shown, every year, it doubles in value, which means 100% increase, after each year. It can be shown, with the power of 2, we would have used, the power of 3, if it would have tripled each year. Here it is doubling, so we use the power of 2. We can also interpret the growth in terms of percentages. For example, 2 to the power of 1 can also be written as 1 plus 100 percent, that is, 100 percent of 1 is equal to 1. 2 to the power 2 means 2 plus 100 percent of 2 means 2, and so on. We can generalize the formula, as shown, on the right side. We have assumed that the growth takes place when a year is completed. In fact, it should not be like this. In nature, growth is a continuous process, somebody, having a height of 3 feet, cannot increase to 4 feet, abruptly, it increases gradually. Let us take an example of 100% annual growth rate, this means, $1 in the beginning, will become $2, at the end of one year. But this growth from $1 to $2, is not abrupt, it is not the case that, until 364th day, there was no growth, and on next day, it grew into $2. In order to find the growth rate in between the year, let us calculate, half yearly growth, we divide the year into two halves, we assume, 50% growth takes place during the first six months, another 50% growth takes place in the next six months. Now we calculate the growth twice, one after six months, which is 50% of the amount at zero time, next six months growth will be 50% of the value, calculated at first six months. 2.25, seems to be more realistic value than 2, this is better than doubling at the end of a year. The formula, on the right side, can be used to divide the time interval into many small intervals. The half yearly formula shows half the growth rate over two time periods. This means 100% divided by 2 is 50% of 1, which is 0.5. Now, let us divide the year into four quarters, assuming 25% growth in every quarter. We do the calculations for every quarter now. At the end of first quarter, $1 is grown to 1.25 due to 25% growth in the first quarter. To calculate the growth at the end of second quarter, we apply 25% growth on 1.25, which was the amount calculated at the end of first quarter, similarly, we calculate the growth at the end of third and fourth quarters. We could have used the same formula, shown earlier to directly calculate the growth at the end of fourth quarter, as shown. Note that when we had divided the time interval into two, the growth at the end of a year, had turned out to be 2.25. After dividing the time into four intervals, we got the value approximately 2.441, that is, $1 has grown into $2.441. This apparently looks, if we keep on making more and more small intervals, we will get better and better growth at the end of a year. Do you think like that? Before we do the calculations with smaller and smaller intervals, we can generalize the formula, as shown. one plus one divided by n, the whole is raised to the power of n. This formula has a great significance in mathematics. Now, let us use this general formula to calculate the growth by taking different values of n. We have already calculated the growth n equal to one, two, and four. Let us take the value of n higher and higher as shown in the table. When n is equal to 12, the yearly growth comes out to be 2.613. 
still higher than, what we obtained, or, when n was equal to 4, by dividing, the time into 365 days, we get the growth as 2.7146. Still higher than the previous one. Making, n equal to 1000, we get, a slightly higher value, which is 2.7169. Look at all the tabulated values, it seems the value is converging to 2.7182. As the value of n reproaches to infinity, the growth value is converging to 2.7182. And this value is our magic e. This formula is used in many many mathematical derivations. We conclude, E is the maximum, continuous, compounding, growth, with 100% growth rate, over a unit time period. The question is now, how we calculate the, growth, if growth rate, and, time period changes. It is very simple, E to power, RT. Let us take an example, if growth rate, is, 15%, and the time period is, 5 years, what will be the growth, at the end of, 5, years? R, is 15%, which means, 0.15, the growth, at the end of 5 years, will be, 2.117. Let us solve a practical problem. If you invest, $100,000 in some financial company, for 5 years, with 15% interest, per year, you should get $211,700, at the end of 5 years. On the other hand, financial companies, apply a different formula to calculate, compound interest. The formula which they use is shown, where P, is the principal amount. Now, look at the table, very closely. Can you answer? Why the profits, are different? You may pause the video, and check. What is the fundamental difference, in these two formulas? Well, the formula in the left column, is calculating, discrete, compounded, interest. The formula in the right column, is calculating, continuous, compounded, interest. I hope, you would have liked this video. Please subscribe and share it. Thanks for watching.